I'm not sure how helpful this will be, but I'm going to record sort of programming this. Um, what I've decided is that the log messages for the reactor program are not very descriptive. So I, I can't really see differences from line to line. So I see that there's no change, but I don't know why there's no change. I don't know what these variables are. Uh, and it's indistinguishable sort of in a uh, in a line by line message. So I don't know if this is running and it's scrolling by or if it's stopped. So what I've decided to do is change up the program a little bit. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of do this programming uh, live. Um, so here you can see that we have two inputs. Um, I want to start processing either by this event timer or by redstone. So earlier in the video, I was talking about how, yes, I need an event to start this, but it, it occurs to me that I can actually force this to happen with a button. Um, and so, you know, I can push this and make that run. So I want to be able to do that now too. Um, so I'm going to move these opcodes around. So I, I presently had a, a streak like this. So this is, this is the hassle of this type of symbolic programming is that um, it becomes difficult to find enough space to do the stuff you want to do and you got to kind of rearrange it. Um, so I'm going to come back down this way and then go back up and around like so. Now this chain of evaluations has to end up here. So this is where my original branch is. I don't know that each of these needs a termination operation. It's kind of more for me to see what all of the potential branches are. So we have four branches in this program um, or four possible outcomes that we want to deal with. The urgent uh, removal of energy or the, the urgent back off, um, a normal back off, do nothing and uh, increase. So these are sort of from ticket up to do nothing, ticket down, ticket down a lot. So that kind of makes sense. So I need these events to have a first input. Now you might ask, why am I doing this random number? So the random number is so that I can tell line by line. So this shouldn't be the same for two runs in a row. And certainly if it is, it's not going to be the same for 10 runs in a row. So um, I'm looking to use a random number here. I don't know, you know, all the ins and outs. I've been programming with this for like a couple of days, but I'm used to uh, orchestration tools in my professional life that uh, use this sort of symbolic coding. So as I move these tiles, the green dots show the flow of uh, execution of this program. So if I push the button, it's going to start executing the program. If the timer goes off, it's going to start executing the program and go this way. So I create a random number between 0 and 9. I store that as a variable. Now I'm using variable 5 for this, but I think what I'm going to do is something else. I am going to use variable 5 to hold a string, which I haven't done yet. Um, so hopefully I can do that here. So I'm going to use a string concatenator, uh, which is down here. All right, so this is my random number, variable one. Um, I'm going to use R for random, and I'm going to use that last number. All right, okay, so now, again, I don't know if that's going to work here. Okay, so there was a reason that I, I pushed it into um, a variable because I don't know that it's going to consider that as a string. And I know that underneath all this somewhere is Java and Java is really weird about typing. Um, so typing is like, is it a string? Is it a number? So I'm going to assume that I have to push this into a variable um, before I can do the concatenation. So now we're going to go variable five. Um, Let's do variable four. And 
as this random number. Uh, well, actually, 0, 1, 2, we'll do 3. We'll do 3. I'm assuming that I only have six variables to work with in this program, which is a silly thing to assume. Um, but for the moment, we're, we're going to assume that. Um, so this one goes to 0, 1, 2, and 3. OK, great. So now I've got that into a variable. I'm going to do a string concatenation. Um, yeah, yeah, that'll work. So r plus variable 3. OK, so now I have this. Um, actually, I'm going to do separator. Then we're going to go get this redstone. All right, so this is the shield redstone. And the shield redstone is going to go to variable 0. I'm going to make another string concatenation. So I'm going to say, uh, right, right, right. I didn't store the previous one, did I? So let's go store that. Before I get too carried away. Operation set variable. Copy the last return value. See, this concerns me because I don't know that I can store the string in a variable. But we're going to try. Otherwise, I may have to find a different way to store a string, which you know, I don't know. I don't know. Mm, okay. Set variable. Let's do variable five. That was why I changed it from before. And we're going to set it based on the previous value. So this is going to be interesting. Um, I wonder, I wonder if tokens can hold strings. Might have to figure out how to use tokens. Set value in a token. Return the last value to a token in an internal slot. This will be interesting to see if I can get this to work. All right. Probably going to be doing a lot of speeding up of this kind of thing. So. We're going to assume that the value that we get out of this string concatenation is going to be available for storage as variable 5. Maybe not, but you know, we'll, we'll find out soon enough. All right, so now get the shield. Put the shield into variable 0. Let's do a concatenation. Um, this is going to be shield. Uh, actually, yeah, I'm going to do this. Shield with variable 0. OK. Now I have two of these strings. I should be able to concatenate between the two of them. So if I come back here, I say, Take what's in variable five. And add to that what is the last string. That should now give me, I'm assuming, um, actually, I want this backwards. I want the last string first. I want the random number as the end. Variable five. OK. So now I have the last string operation, which is this concatenation of s and variable 0. 
and then I'm going to concatenate those two into this value. And then, so you can see we're creeping back towards here. Um, I'm going to run out of space again. All right, so we want to store that as variable five again. I mean, this, this all may count as the last string operation as well, so it's kind of odd. I, I don't know if I'm able to continuously add to the string through this. Um, oh, right, we're storing it in variable five. Okay. Now we're going to read the temperature and variable one. I'm going to make sure that this path flows. The little green dots are all lining up. This little symbol here tells you that there's something wrong. So in this particular case, um, you know, this is an unused thing. Um, in some of the cases, it's, it's the routing. So this doesn't have a path to it, and now it's happy. So these little blinking red dots are something you weren't gone before you go trying to execute the program. OK. So now we're going to set variable one. Um, I'm going to do another string concatenation. This is temperature, right? So I'm going to do T and variable one. And now I should have the string. Um, I'm going to not use the saturation because right now I'm not using that in this program anyway to make decisions. So for the moment, I'm going to not care about that. I'm going to do one more string concatenation. Uh, OK, flow, flow, flow. This one, I'm going to say that last string I want to add with my current string in variable five, I'm crossing my fingers that it is a string. And come on, we're going to put that string back into variable five. Okay. Then we're going to grab the saturation. Um, I put that in a variable, but like I said, I'm not evaluating that anywhere, so I don't care as much. Okay, so now I have variable five. Um, should read something like T number for temperature, and S number for shield, and R number for random. Now it might seem weird that I want a random number before I want the saturation, but this is going to change. So again, I want to distinguish the lines of output. OK, what else do we have blinking? OK, so here, increase in variable 5. So I'm assuming that the string is going to be held in variable 5. And I'm going to create that as a log message. Uh, last string. OK. So that's the idea. So increase, last message. Here, same thing. This is going to be no change. So instead, I'm going to put Go change close. Actually, this is doesn't need this separator because I should already have my separator. This one is no change and variable five. I need another string concatenation. Okay, here to you. This is decrease. I'm going to move that here. Decrease. Close with variable five. Okay, I come to here. I'm going to output that last string. And finally, Now, I don't, these are 
program terminators, by the way. So I, I have these on here mostly to see that these are the ends of these branches. All of these log messages may be enough. I, I might not have to do anything besides that. Um, but it seems good practice, I don't know. I've done too many other programming things that are more sensitive, so this is urgent. Deeds. I'm just going to leave that as urgent as, uh, uh, what should we call this? Critical? Um, okay, we'll call that critical. And this is going to be the last string. Oh, I need to add it to variable 5. And we're going to make that flow into here. Last string. Operation. Okay, so I think we've now modified this program uh, from what you might have first seen it to give us a little more information in the logging. So I'm going to save this. This is my new reactor program. Most of this is just outputting messages. So the actual parts that control the redstone, I'm reading redstone, and uh, you know I'm I'm saying we should increase or decrease uh, the behavior, and then setting redstone to do a shield pulse. Um, all of that is pretty compact logic. This is just so that I know what the program is doing. Um, a lot of this stuff is that way. So let's go run it. Find out where I've screwed it all up. I remember I said I'm going to assume that I only had these six variables. That's because you can run another program and I can allocate these two variables to it. So these are the allocations for this. Okay, well now I, I already see a Java error. So that's interesting. There's a null. So my, my random number apparently is tough to convert into a string. Oh, that is neat. Yeah, that, that was that was super bad. Okay. So screwed it up somewhere here. Wow, okay, doesn't like that at all. Oh, I can't even remove the card. <laughs> Can I pull this program? Okay, great. <coughs> so, my random number is coming back as null. So I'm guessing that I have a typing problem somewhere in here. Um, that's a pretty common sort of Java response when you're doing something that you shouldn't have. But at least the message told me kind of where it was, right? So I'm getting the temperature and the uh, shield levels appended to this message. So I am able to store a string as a variable. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, so there's something fishy about what I'm doing here. So this is a random number. I'm storing it in variable 3, r plus v3. Store that as v5. Hmm. Is there something about this it doesn't like? Um, this is where I'm going to have to do some testing. Okay, so it's getting a little flummoxed with the behavior of this uh, uh, random number generator. And I created a, a small test program. So basically, if you see redstone, so I push a button, generate a random number, store that as a variable create a string, and output that to the log. So I was able to run that over here, and you can see the results. So the result is pretty clear that it works. I can store this random number. Um, so I'm going to go back to troubleshooting why that's not working in the big program. So um, it's reactor. So I'm going to load this back up. OK. so. Here's my starts. I'm either getting redstone or uh, this timer goes off. I'm going to generate a random number from 0 to 9. I'm going to store that as variable 3. I'm going to create a string with this. And then I'm going to store that as variable 5. 
So that all seems very legit to me. I am really not sure why it's complaining about that. Pretty much the same sequence. Hmm. Now one of the things that happens in Java is sometimes if you put a number first when you're concatenating it as a string, you need something to go here. So maybe it doesn't like this first tilde. Uh, let's uh, see if we can change this such that we're post-pending that. And I can't imagine that makes a huge difference. So this is stored as variable. Wait. Constant, yeah, variable three. R, second value, okay. Goes into variable five. Get the shield. Put shield as a variable zero. I'm going to say shield is S. Close variable zero. Now in here, I'm going to say we want the last operation plus variable five. Hmm, so I don't have anywhere to put that. So I need another concatenate. Ah, oh, nuts. All right. Um, hmm. I'm going to have to get very sneakity here. Uh, let's go. Let's create some space this way. Yeah, that's going to give me two more outcomes. Perfect. All right. So this is going to give me S. Um, and then that string. I'm just going to have to add a separator, which is annoying, but all right, fine. Okay. So let's do another string operation. So this string operation, I want variable. Oh, no, I want the last string. Okay, I'm getting lost here. So we're going to get this string. We're going to set that as variable five. I'm going to take this variable, zero plus s. And I want that last result to be prepended with this, or postpended, I should say. And then. I'm going to take that operation and I'm going to add back variable five. And then I'm going to store that whole thing back into variable five. So I wonder, no, I, I mean, it, it'll be null by the time it gets here. I think I'm going to add a checkpoint message because I just need to troubleshoot why this thinks it's freaking out. So we're going to put a checkpoint message in here. of storing that in X. I'm also going to say, I want to output that last message. Because I know if it's null here, then it's going to say null. So I, I know that the problem is in this part of the chain. Yeah, that's how I want to do it. All right, so then that's, that's going to be a checkpoint message. So this is a common troubleshooting thing that I do um, when troubleshooting languages like this. So I'll, I'll put some other thing in there that says, hey, tell me what you're doing at the moment. So that you can get that on the screen. Okay, shields. All right, S, V, last plus this. Okay, plus V5, store that back into V5. Get this. I mean, this one worked, right? I mean, that, that's the thing that's throwing me here is that I can see it on there. It's tilde T. That's why I don't think this is the problem, but I really don't know. I really don't know what the problem is yet. So I'm sure it's it'll be very obvious once uh, once it occurs to me. But 
it's very unobvious at the moment. So uh, this is the reactor program, so we'll save that. Actually, validate that real quick. Okay. No errors. And we'll go back here to the reactor module. All right, now, bing. Internal error. Uh, all right. So, db debug. So there's a way that we can step through all of these opcodes. Um, so let's try doing that. I, I don't really have another option at this point. I've created a test program. That test program runs successfully, and it does the thing that this program doesn't seem to do. So let's see where this one is specifically failing. Let's see if it helps point to uh, where to go. So debug step processor zero. Evaluate random. Okay, so I now have a random number in the uh, in the works here. Debug step core zero. Set variable. Okay, so now I should have some variable here, number five. Okay. So our random number from zero to nine was five. DB guys zero. Do concatenate. I don't know that I have a way to see that string. DB s zero. Set variable. Okay, so now if we look into variable five. have a bunch of garbage in here. So it did not set variable five. <coughs> hmm. Also these variables seem to be stuck from the previous running. Alright. Boy it does not like that. Hmm. Zero four internal error. Zero. One, two, three, four. Store variable five. So something about this string it just really doesn't like. Let's, let's switch it up here. Uh, let's go back this way. So we're going to take this last string, R and V3. Boy, I just don't get it. I need my program card. Stop running my flawed program. For those of you who found this recording from my reactor recording. Um, yes, the reactor is still running in the background. Fortunately, it's uh, quite stable. So I'm not getting as efficient as I want as I'm no longer in the sweet spot of a uh, temperature output of 11. Um, but that's okay. It's not going to explode. So I'm just going to replace that opcode and see if that works. Uh, I don't expect it to. So one, two, three, four, five. Wait, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, this this guy here. I'm uh, just going to kill it. So goodbye. And we're going to replace that with. to 
do the exact same thing. Let's store it as variable five. All right, close. And connect that back up. Save me, Obi Wan. And go back over here. Aha! So, there's some kind of glitch in the programmer that gave us a bad opcode there. Well, that's annoying. Alright, so now we can go take that back out. Get rid of my spontaneous log message. All right, I'm going to store that as variable five. Now, let me look at my output here because we fiddled with the separators quite a bit. So, in front of the uh, between the T and the S, I'm going to need another separator. Um, now. I remember before that the prepending of the S actually worked. So I'm going to maybe do that here. Yeah. Okay. So, ah, come on. I don't know why I like Tilda as a separator. I'm not Hispanic in any way, and I only took a couple years of high school Spanish, but it is my favorite separator because I think other people don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh, it doesn't reach. Ah! Okay. As, as it turns out, there's, there's actually a thing for that. I haven't had to use it in this program, but now I'm, my program is all wired back together. Okay. So, let's save this guy. In programming terms, we call that a no op. No operation. Okay. I'm anticipating these 10 seconds before it runs. There it is. Yeah. <coughs> Baby. Okay, so I'm getting a temperature of 10, a shield output of 3, and a random 0. So I've decided to increase. All right, so it's not actually increasing anything because I think I have the increase program like in my hand. Yeah, there we go. So let's go put this back into play. Where is increase? And I don't have a screen running for each of these guys. Running four, okay, awesome. So now I have a status message there and 687 here. All right. Okay, 688. Okay, we're back in business. So everything seems to be flowing correctly through this twisted logic. And I now have a way to see line by line what it's doing. How, what it's gonna do is increase. Um, it's based on the temperature at level 10 and shield at three. Um, and I have a random number just to distinguish between the uh, previous lines. So I know this seems like a weird thing to do, but I just got really tired of not being able to tell if this was scrolling or what. And, uh, you know, maybe there's a way to change the color of these lines. That would be that would be pretty cool. But this satisfies me. I'm very happy. So I can see this running. Uh, I can also push this button now. So I added the start. Oh, is it really not going to start? Ah. Really? Et tu Sad. Okay. What did I do wrong? I'm guessing it's the wrong facing. So this is the north side. Okay. Yes, I run back and forth so that I can tell north from south on my mini map. And I'm looking on the south side. Yeah, well, that's, that'll do it. All right, north. 
uh, reactor, save. Okay, let's try that again. See, this is why it's important to have that random number there because now I'll be able to tell if it's running because of something I did. Okay, well, that is how to use the programmer to create a really convoluted symbolic message program. I hope you didn't die of boredom watching.